use of the term, um, the right of self-determination is being um, used as folks come on board and, and they do their EVPs and, and uh, follow through with uh, One Heaven and Acadia, correct? That is a well, uh, form the of first thing I, Exactly. The first thing I said was no one, no entity, force, no one stands between you and the divine. No one. Right. That is a that is a that is a fundamental concept of Eucadia. Yep. Very good. All right, back to Ron. Got another question? Ron, are you there? Hello, Terry. Yeah, there you are. Hi, Terry Frank. I'm gonna shift the conversation slightly. I was on your website the other night on uh, one evil looking at the most evil uh cities or sites in the world and I looked yep. at Baalbek and what strikes me is how in the world did those people move 1,200 ton block, number one number, number two how did they query this, this stone out of, the, out of the mountain and then how did they move it I mean I, I'd like to have that technology today I, I, I think um, most construction companies would like to have that technology. Oh, yeah. The ones that build aircraft carriers would like to have it. I don't, I don't know of any engineering equipment in the world that can move 1,200 tonnes horizontally and vertically uh, anywhere. With it. There's no cranes that have that capacity. Uh, D-10 cats can't do it either. No. No. But you know what's... Uh... What's striking is that the base of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, they have the same stone. The same yes, they do. Yep, they're big. I've, I've seen very them. big. Very, very big. And uh, uh, Zachariah Sitchin wrote about it in one of his books. He had a picture of one stone sticking out of the quarry that was uh, half done. Yep. Yep. Well, you, there are technologies that are long lost that we, if you notice one of the building materials of the ancients, it is stone, isn't it? Yep. And one thing that stone has a particular quality that we really don't pay much attention to because, well, we're, we're all image trained now. We go to their schools and learn their history and learn how to be, hopefully in their mind, to be a good slave. But stone responds to resonance. That's one of the features of stone, is it not? Oh. Stone yeah. reacts to resonance. That's now, right. there was a ceremony that a number of people testified in Tibet of all places, the last bastion of this technology, where they did a ceremony of sound and stone, where they moved a several hundred ton stone in sympathetic sound by using a array of horns that produce sub um, frequency. Uh, vibrations, sub-audible frequency vibrations and a range of vibrations arranged around that stone in a horseshoe. And that several hundred ton stone lifted and danced as if it was a butterfly in the spring sun. Right. There's your answer. There was a, I think an American researcher back in the 30s, he actually witnessed that. Mm-hmm. And they they were actually some of them were chanting. I get, maybe they were blowing the horns too. But well, if you yeah. if you don't if anyone thinks uh, that I'm uh, you know blowing a different kind of horn, what do we know about uh, Jericho? Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Right there you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We we've missed the boat. No, no, we we haven't missed the boat. We're back in the Stone Ages. Can well, we... I hope we are. 
then we can use stone as it used to be used. But no, no, I mean, I know what you mean. But it, look, we the biggest frustration is we're dealing when we're dealing with trying to get ourselves out, we're dealing with stupid people. But that's no excuse to behave stupidly ourselves. Yeah? Right. And I think the biggest thing that I'm trying to express to people is the knowledge will change you. It changes you spiritually. When you honour the history and you honour the law and know the law, then, then ultimately the stupid people will be exposed and the stupidity will be exposed because they know, you know, I'm, I'm hoping people now are, are of the opinion the more they go out and, and try and disprove what I'm saying, that every court case is a sacrament of penance that that's a building block from which to build your knowledge. And it will it will change, Ron. It's changing what you're dealing with, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Good. I just have to complete the process now. Good. Okay. I think that's it for, for, for me. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank, thank you. All right. So... As a reminder to the callers on the phone lines, if you press star 8, if you have a question, we will get to your question. Um, there are some more questions over here on the chat. Um, when you were speaking of the new monetary system earlier, there was a question regarding that. How are we doing with the A for B equivalent trade acceptances and et cetera regarding the new money system? Yep, okay. Well, I mean, accepted for value... Uh, is a procedure in terms of, I mean, ultimately, it's a procedure in terms of who, who is uh, who is uh, liable for the payment and is a payment um, due, uh, or are we effectively paying twice? So that that is more to do with your claim of right to administer your own estates versus their refusal to grant that right and their insistence to still administer the estates which means that they are now liable to pay all the straw man bills. That's A for V. Now, when we talk about the money, we're talking about how does the most important historical private spiritual money system integrate into public money? Now, the short answer to that is that the public money system exists and cannot be removed. It cannot be removed it exists in every single system in the world and that the reverse of a instrument issued by the reserve banks into national sovereign currency will have a equivalent face value of public money so that when you are approved a promise of funds of credit from the reserve bank for whatever the amount is, its reverse will be equivalent public money. That is, it will be the same as if it was issued, or in fact more so, if it was issued than the Federal Res one of the Federal Reserve temples. So that is why the perfection of the system needs to be finished because once people get wind of what this means, you don't want to end up having a thousand people saying, I need a loan, I need this, I need that, I need that. It's not about free money. It's not about, um, you know, solving all your problems by having all this, uh, all this credit around you. The, the public money is valid because it represents form and energy. Without the its attached form and energy, money is is useless. Money is meaningless. So it's the rules around that that I want to ensure and we want to ensure is absolutely 100% before we launch it. It's just taking a bit longer because of this research. So I want to separate. A for V, different issue. Money, public and private. Reverse is in public money. When you get those issues that will allow you to engage directly into this present system without there being a problem. Now, <clears throat> will the system accept it? I'm, we're dealing with stupid people now, so there'll probably be more stupid people. But at the end of the day, it's indefensible. They cannot defend it, certainly based on the knowledge we spoke of tonight. 
Yes, very good. So it basically keeps everything on the credit side um, from the beginning. Everything's on the credit. The concept of debt and debtism is over. Is over. And if people want to know when I said that how are the bankers robbing the treasury of heaven, you've got to understand that their whole system, their entire system, is based on the recognition of the treasury of heaven. That is the basis of the sacrament of uh, penance and indulgence. You have to go and read that and go and have a look at their own laws and you'll see what I mean by that. Under their system, there is an accounting in heaven and then a reflection on earth. And the accounting is he in heaven is that for every sin, a credit is issued from the treasury of heaven. Whenever money on earth is issued, it is connected to the treasury of heaven. So when they abuse the money issued by their private temples on earth, they are robbing the treasury of heaven. That is a pricey, a summary of a substantial amount of the theology and doctrine of the Roman cult, the predominant system behind the entire global financial system. Wow, very good. All right, the next question on the, uh, from the chat here, I see. Who is being judged December 21st and by who or what force? Uh, all the people given notice on December the 21st, 2010. There were seven notices issued. They pretty much cover all the people who are doing the wrong thing. Uh, the people who are being judged on December 21st are the people who are doing the wrong thing, who are in positions of power and authority, principally claiming that power and authority through ecclesiastical office, who refuse to do their job. Now, now if, they, if they continue to refuse to do their job, then what they're being judged is they're being judged incompetent, unworthy. They're not being condemned to hell. You've got to remember, the whole point of the covenant one heaven is to end that concept. No one is condemned to an eternity of, of, of pain. That's, that's the kind of thinking that the old world wants us to keep thinking. That's not what we mean. A judgment is like a giant psych eval. December 21st, 2011 is one enormous psych evaluation. They've been told to, to change their way. They've been notified to fix things up. If they fail to read and fail to acknowledge, then clearly, clearly they are suffering some severe illness and they will be judged incompetent in flesh. That's the day of judgment. That's what it's about. And if they are incompetent, then they cannot possibly remain in office. Okay? Very good. Thank you for that, Frank. Um, Next question. Can you please give a practical example of how to conduct yourself in court when you have sent an uh, executor letter, a decree of nullity, and the uh, revocation of power of attorney? Absolutely. <clears throat> well, first off, dress. Uh, some people say, why should I dress up when I go to their court? I mean, they don't respect me. I, I, I would argue that when you go to court, you are going to court as an ambassador of the divine, as an ambassador of superior law. So one needs to dress appropriately, conservatively and appropriately. Secondly, you know, make sure your hair is kept and, and, and you look um, clear. Secondly, when you go to court, um, even though that these people may show no respect to you, uh, remain calm, remain confident. Uh, if you're going to court, it's presumed that you have studied and and understand, or not know, I don't like the word understand, but know how to conduct yourself when the court begins in terms of approaching the bar and stating clearly that you enter the bar um, as holder of your entitle, that you uh, will not play games, that you will not appear to be rude, that you will not speak over anyone in the court, that you will speak clearly and slowly and confidently, that if the judge seeks to act in the role of the prosecutor, that you will remind them of that, that you will um, uh, support and defend what you've put forward, uh, 